forgive me, it's a bit uh, ham-fisted this morning on broadcast. I'm without my producer. She's with the uh, uh, Canterbury North uh, Primary Care Network, uh, sorting out uh, a um, joint venture on vaccination between uh, the Sea Cadets and uh, the National Health Service, um, starting in our location on Monday. Um, so I'm broadcasting on my own today and I started off by making a complete mess of it. But never mind, we are here together on this lovely day. The rain has gone away for the time being at least. And do you join us in the benefits of uh, Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter, where uh, we're in our service of morning prayer. It's uh, in the uh, day after Ascension Day, uh, around through to uh, the day of Pentecost, and uh, it's a special period for Christians. Uh, you join us on Wednesday, the 19th of May, 2021. Uh, my name is John Morrison, and I'm standing in for our rector, uh, the Reverend Joe Richards. We're asked today, and we do this with the greatest of pleasure because it's one of our churches uh, has this dedication. We're asked today to remember uh, Dunstan, Archbishop of Canterbury, and restorer of monastic life, 988. Uh, you recall uh, those who uh, were watching the uh, communion um, uh, last Sunday, the Holy Communion, that uh, John preached on. Uh, Dunstan, and uh, there's uh, so much more information uh, has come from uh, the rector this morning in her, her morning notes. Um, so I'll read you uh, just a small piece from uh, Exciting Holiness uh, about Dunstan. Dunstan was born near Glastonbury about 910 from a noble, uh, in a, into a noble family. He received as a consequence of good education and spent time at the court of the King of Wessex. A saintly uncle urged him to enter the monastic life, and, but he delayed, uh, but following, followed the advice in time when he returned uh, on recovering from an illness. He went to uh, Glastonbury and lived as a monk, devoting his work um, time to creative pursuits. He was apparently skilled in uh, illumination, music, and metalwork. In 943, the new king made him abbot, and this launched a great revival of monastic life in England. Starting with Glastonbury, Dunstan restored discipline to several monasteries and promoted study and teaching. Under two later kings, he rose to political and ecclesiastical eminence, being the chief minister um, and Archbishop of Canterbury under King Edgar. This enabled him and his followers to extend his reforms into the whole English church. In 1970, he fell from political favour, but continued as Archbishop, preaching and teaching. He died in the year 988. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and close us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of God's righteousness. It's the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, 
who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of him, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you in his house, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the gift of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 2, starting at the first verse, is The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. Why are the nations in tumult? And why do the peoples divide, devise a vain plot? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. He who dwells in heaven shall laugh them to scorn, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury. You have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. I will proclaim the decree, the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his appointed. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be prudent, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and with trembling, kiss his feet, lest he be angry with you, and you perish from the way. For his wrath is kindly, quickly kindled. Happy are all they who take refuge in him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge from his anointed. Most high and holy God, Lift our eyes to your Son enthroned on Calvary, and as we behold his meekness, shatter our earthly pride, for he is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 29 is, The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon mighty waters. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. 
The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a wild young ox. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadath. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits a throne above the water flood. The Lord sits a throne as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Peace. Open our ears, glorious Lord Christ, to hear the music of your voice above the chaos of this world. Open our eyes to see the vision of your glory, for you are our King, now and forever. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 30, through to chapter 32, verse 14. Then Moses recited the words of this song to the very end, in the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. Let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop like the rain, my speech condense like the dew like gentle rain on grass, like showers on new growth. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God without deceit, just and upright is he. Yet his degenerate children have dealt falsely with him, a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus repay the Lord, O foolish and sensible people? Is not he your father who created you, who made you, and established you? Remember the days of old, consider the years long past, ask your father and he will inform you, your elders and they will tell you, when the Most High apportioned the nations, when he divided humankind, he fixed the boundaries of his peoples according to the number of the gods. The Lord's own portion was his people. Jacob is a lot his share. He sustained him in a desert land, he, in a howling wilderness waste. He shielded him, cared for him, guarded him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stirs up its nest and hollows over its young as it spreads its wings and takes them up, and bears them aloft on his pinions. The Lord alone guided him. No foreign god was with him. He set him upon the heights of the land and fed him with produce of the field. He nursed him with honey from the crags, with oil from the flinty rock, curds from the herds and milk from the flock with fat of lambs and rams, bashan bulls and goats. Together with the choices of wheat, you drank it, the fine wine from the blood of grapes. A Song of Ezekiel The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia! I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. A new heart I will give you and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it 
was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. Our second reading comes from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verse 11 to the end. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we lose we, because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers. And you know what murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God love abide in any, God's love abide in anyone else? How has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and we reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by his will, you know that he abides in us, by spirit that he has given us. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit and kindling us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the gracious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the life of of your love. The Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of the servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by forgiveness of their sin. To give his people a, a tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory.
glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Alleluia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for the day and its tasks, for the world and its needs, for the church and her life. In this special period, we pray for God's royal priesthood, and the empowerment of all of us by the Spirit. We pray for those who wait on God, that they may find renewal. We pray for all people, that they may acknowledge the kingdom of the ascended Christ. And we pray for the earth, for productivity and for fruitful harvests. And especially during this period, we pray for all who are struggling with broken relationships. Not only those who are directly involved, but all those who are affected as a consequence of breaking. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Collect of the Day Almighty God, who raised up Dunstan to be a true shepherd of the flock, a restorer of monastic life, and a faithful counsellor to those in authority, give to all pastors the same gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may be true servants of Christ and all his people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. But thank you for joining us during our service of morning prayer. There will be a service of night prayer or complaint this evening at six o'clock. And then the rector will return on Thursday morning tomorrow morning at uh, nine o'clock uh, for the next service of morning prayer enjoy today between the showers and i look forward to those who can be there to seeing you this evening bye for now